this is what the journal looks like finished and one of my favorite sayings is simplicity is often the best this video I'm going to show you how to sew pages in a soft cover fabric journal and this is part two this video is a continuation on how to make a soft fabric fold over junk journal cover and that was video part one what I used to make this journal cover were some flower sack tea towels that I got from Amazon in USA I'll put the link below for you if you want to get some they are absolutely beautiful to create with they take painting or dyeing any color really really well because it's hundred percent cotton I made this white one here and I haven't decided what to do with this one yet and of course you don't have to use a flower sack to make a journal cover this one here I used a medium weight canvas from spotlight in Australia so the one that's not dyed I made it a soft cover and the one that's coffee dyed I stiffened it so it's quite firm this one's different again it's just a hundred percent cotton and I just used acrylic paint to color it then I lined it with a fat quarter and put some trim around the edge and just done a messy stitch to keep it all together so if you want to know how I made this cover just head on over and watch part one of this video the link is below for this journal I'm going to make one signature and I'm going to show you how to prepare the pages to fit into the cover you're going to be making your own page template you'll need your cover and a white piece of paper folded in half now I already made my cover to suit an A4 sheet of paper so my A4 sheet of paper is an eighth of an inch shorter at the top and an eighth of an inch shorter at the bottom so I don't have to do anything to the top or the bottom put the folded piece of your to be template in the fold of your cover at the spine here make sure that that piece of paper at the right hand side here is an eighth of an inch shorter than the edge of my cover so if your piece of paper hangs over further than your cover just put a pencil mark on it and then just trim that off at that line and now this folded piece of paper is going to be your guide to collect all the page papers you need from here on I'm making one signature so that will be 28 pieces of paper folded in half I've got some tea dyed A4 sheets of paper here and I'm just going to get one of these sheets and it's going to be my first page to go in the journal so put the template over the top and I'm just going to mark the edge and then with my ruler and a craft knife I'm just going to cut that piece off all of the other pages I make from here on are going to go inside this page the reason I'm making this page first is because I want to put a bit of trim on it and this trim is going to poke out from the cover so I've just glued this in place and put a straight line decorative stitch over the top of it so now you can just see the lovely fringing poking out from the edge of the cover so now I'm going to keep going and just grab a few pages that I've already started preparing so you can see here these pages are the right height because I'm using the A4 but it's too wide I'm not going to trim these one by one I'm going to put them all inside each other first and then later on I'll trim them so at the moment I'm just figuring out where I want all my pages to be in this signature 
it's always nice to put a printed page and then a tea dyed page and this is deli paper that I've just done some stenciling on and another tea dyed page this is an Edith Holden page now I'm just going to show you something with the Edith Holden books there are two sides of her books this one here when you take the book apart your pages can be used with the fold line still intact so I can put my template on here and if I cut these pages back I lose a lot of the image or the text and this smaller book when you take it apart it's glued together so they're single pages so this fits in my template it's too short top and bottom so that doesn't matter but it fits in widthwise it's going to stay inside my cover so I'm going to select two of these so I just carefully tear this out and I'm using a clear medical tape this is a 3m medical tape and I'm just going to put the two pages together very close at the center with about a one millimeter gap so that when you close the pages they're not restricted then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put another piece of the tape on the opposite side so I've trimmed it off at the top of the bottom and then I've laid over a piece of washi tape now I've used narrow washi tape you can use some medical tape underneath and then put the narrow washi tape over the top so your narrow washi tape will cover the medical tape but still look right when you put your other pages in on top you can also use paper sticker lace this is a, a gold piece but I end up just using this neutral color in the paper one and I'm going to stick it down over the top of the medical tape and you can see here that it's not as wide as the medical tape and I'm also going to show you a tip later on on how to use the backing strip of this sticker paper. So I'm just going to keep going, adding some more pages. And this page here is a piece of paper. And with the leftover color of paint, the water paint that I had when I done my cover, I just brushed it lightly over my paper. So I have a piece of paper that matches my cover. Now this one here is a, a page out of an exercise book. I've just tea dyed it. So I'm going to put my template on the fold line and resize it. So I cut that page off and I folded the back page over. So that just gives me a flip out on the back side of that page and I just keep going this is a vintage page out of one of my mum's icing books my mum used to be a cake decorator I love this center page I wanted to keep it for one of my own journals but I've decided to put it in this one it just looks so good now here's the part where I said I was going to show you what I do with the backing of my sticker paper I'm going to use it as a stencil on the back of this page. This is a page that I've made from a pattern piece. So on the other side it's printed, but it's plain on this side. So doing this is going to serve two purposes. I've picked a color that matches that yellow page that you see at the top of the screen here. It's well it's matching enough. So when you put it together like this it just changes it from that blank page and if you didn't want a stencil you can also grab some more of that sticker paper and just put it on your page instead off camera I carried it all the way through both the front and the back of that page now this one here is a dictionary page and this is from a very large dictionary that I've got it's like a pictionary I've tea dyed one and I've kept one plain 
So the tea dye looks really good. So if you like these pages, I've got these available in my shop. I'll put the link below for you there for these as well. Now I've gathered 26 pages. I'm going to put all these pages together and I'm going to show you how I trim them back. I use a craft knife for cutting. I only use scissors for fussy cutting. I use the Scotch retractable blade. It's perfect because I can snap off the blades and always keep a sharp knife at hand. I'll put the link where I get these from in the description box below as well. And it's always handy to have extra blades in your drawer as well. So if you have a look at this now, you'll see how my first page is blocking my view from all the other pages below it. So if I bring back in my template and put it at the front here now, you'll see that the template is now protruding out from the cover. Just that slight bit. When we started, it was inside the cover by an eighth of an inch. And now, it's because I've put so many more pages in here, it's actually crept out towards the cover edge. So what I have to do now is I'm not going to trim any off my template. I always want to keep my template as a template. So if I put the template back on this short page here, I can see that it might be able to become my new page guide. But this front page has to be moved out of the road. I know it's going to be okay. I can't trim this front page because I've got my fringing on it. So now when I pull my cover back out of the road, you can see that my new guide page is just inside the cover, which I'm going to work with that because once I stitch these pages in, it's going to be perfect. So this now is my new guide for all the other pages. Before I start cutting, I need to have a look through all of the pages and make sure that if I do cut off using the new guide page, that I'm not going to destroy any of the pages that I want. So I'm going to cut that bird off here. I'm going to cut this off right beside the print here. And I'll be cutting off a little bit of the Edith Holden, which is fine. I'll be cutting off a little bit of this stripe with the damage on it. This one here, I am definitely going to lose a bit of the kookaburra stamp and I don't want to do that. My solution for this, I can take it out of here and move it closer to the front. So I'll do that. I'm just going to keep that page there. When I move this closer to the front, it actually will move further away from the edge. When I put the guide page back over the top, and I'll have a bit of a look at it, I can see that it just misses the tail of my bird. And I can go back and put the blank page in its place, which doesn't matter where it gets cut off. And I'm back to the middle, which shows my double spread. Now we've got to even up the top and the bottom. We're not going to be able to do that while it's inside the cover. So you need to take your pages out of the cover and even the top and the bottom. Then open up your signature at the very center. And once you've opened it at the center, get your fingers and push that center right into the fold line. Once it's at the fold line and everything's tucked right in, your top and bottom is level, get your ruler and put that ruler on your shortest page or your guide page in my case. And this is where we're going to cut off all the excess pages. When you're cutting these pages off, just take your time 
and I'm cutting through a few at a time and making several passes. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I'm all the way through. Once you're all the way through, you've got this lovely, neat, straight edge cut. All the pages now are even. Now my pages are a bit uneven on the top and much more even on the bottom. Before you cut anything off, always check it with your cover. It's fitting perfect except for a couple of pages. If I put my ruler on here and just trim through all of these pages, I could come across a little problem because I've only got two pages that need trimming and all the others are the right height. So what might happen is my blade might hit the shorter pages and I could get a crooked cut. So you don't need to cut through all of your pages when you've only got two to trim. So I'm going to take out the signature that I want to cut and I'm just going to trim off the top of it just by a little bit. I'm using my eye, I don't need to measure. And then I just put it back the right way up where it was in my journal. And I'll go through and I'll pick the second piece that was too long and do the same. Put that back in and level the pages up top and bottom again. Now that's much better. I did not need to trim the whole lot of those pages top and bottom and put them back in my cover. Now this has still given me enough room to put more things in my journal. And now I've trimmed those page edges back, I can do some decorative punch edges. So I'll just go through and I put the signatures on angle again so I don't lose where they have to go back in. And I just pull out the single page on its own. It's much easier to work this way. And I just punch the edges and then I put them back in the signature. Edge punching is a wonderful way to just pretty up your journal a little bit. Now I made a boo-boo with punching the edge of this page. So what I did is I just cut it off and now I've got a shorter page. But I fix it in the next section by gluing some lace down on it. And then I just grabbed a new piece of tea dyed paper, punched the edge and popped that back in. And with my little corner punch here, I just done a very simple decoration on the corner of this paper bag. Now again, before we sew in the pages to the cover, it's a good idea to add any lace to the pages if you're going to do that. I'm using the Helmer fabric glue. The equivalent to that is Fabri-Tac. So what I do is I just hold my journal on its side and then I pick another couple of spots where I think it'll look good and then just lay the lace there and have a look at it. I'll cut the lace and glue it in place. You don't always have to sew your lace in. You can most definitely just use the fabric glue. So now I've glued that piece in. I'm just going to find my next spot, which is about three quarters of the way through the book. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I love it when this works out so well. So I'm just going to put this piece here. And this piece here, I'm going to put on the very last page. So I've done that. I've glued these two pieces of lace down. I just love the tatty edge of the cover, like the raw edge with the lace. And I think this looks really pretty now. Now, what do you do if you decide to add a couple of more pages after you've already trimmed your signature. So I've put 26 pages in, I'm going to make it 28. I'm not using my template, 
I'm actually going to use the book pages that I've already trimmed in the signature. So I'll pull out the area that I want to add the page to and that page beside it is the page I'm going to use as my template. So I'll put the signature back in and then I'll mark it with my pencil and then I'll take it out and in this instance I can fold it and I'll put my ruler just under that fold line and I'll cut the other side off. And now I can just put that back in with the other signatures. And that's how easy it is to add a couple more signatures after you've trimmed. Same here, just figure out where you want to add it, use the page beside it as your guide, trim off any excess and just pop that back into your journal. So I've just gone from 26 pages to 28. So folded, that's given me 56 pages in total. Now finally, the bit that you've come here to watch this video for, how to sew the pages into a fabric cover. For sewing the pages into your cover, you've got to poke the holes in your pages first. We're going to use the template that we use to size our pages. Then go through your pages until you find a shorter page. Put your template back down and mark the top and bottom of the short page on your template. Keep going through till you find the tiniest page or it could even be an envelope. Put the template over the top of the tiny page and then mark both top and bottom. Now I'm going to mark my sewing holes. So if I come in an inch, I know I'm going to catch that page there. But what I actually am going to do is I'm going to come in a little bit further. I'm going to come in one and a quarter inch. Then I come up from the bottom one and a quarter inch and that's going to be my bottom hole. It's always a good idea to put a cross through the hole you're not going to use. So then from the bottom hole and the top hole, just find the center and put a mark there for your holes. So I'm going to open this up because I need it to be on the opposite side. I can see the holes through the paper, so I'm just going to mark them here. And this is my clean side. It's much easier to see. So I'm just going to mark this top so that when I go to punch my holes in, I know that's the top of my template. So now we're ready to punch the sewing holes in through the signature and the cover together. So what you're going to need to punch the holes in is a bookbinder's awl, or you can use a, a clay modeling tool, or you can use a paper piercer. Anything that you've got that you could use as a pokey tool. A foam book is handy. I open it up at the center and I use this for a cradle. And what the cradle does is it holds the book in the center for you while you punch your holes in. You need some sewing thread. I'm just using a crochet cotton. It was white, I just tea dyed it. You could use a brown embroidery thread. You'll need a large eye needle or a bookbinder's needle. Also grab yourself a couple of paper pegs. I'm going to start by leveling up my pages, top and bottom, and making sure that they are pushed right into the spine area. So find the center of your book and push all the way into the spine area so that all of your pages are definitely as tight as they can be into that spine area. Once you've done that, clamp one side of that, those pages together and then go over the other side and clamp that. You can clamp the opposite side if you like. I'm going to fold the long parts of my template out of the way and fold it 
back the opposite side so I can see the word top on the top side of my journal facing up and then I'm just going to cradle that into my phone book. I'm going to put my clamps holding my template to my journal pages. While I'm holding my journal with my left hand, I'm going to grab my pokey tool, find my centre hole. Once I've got that pokey tool lined up, I'm then just going to push it all the way down into the phone book. I'm pushing all the way through my pages and my cover. Give it a bit of a, a wiggle if you need to, so that then you can pull it back out. Do the same on the bottom hole and the top hole. Now one thing that happens here when you're working with a fabric journal is these little holes here will close up. So you can see them now but you watch what happens in a minute. As soon as I start moving this journal around these holes are going to close up on me. This is probably the trickiest part of sewing your pages into a fabric journal. So you do need to have a bit of patience here. I'm going to keep this going in real time and I'll show you a few of my tips that will help you get past this problem area. I'm going to put my pokey tool back through this centre hole from the inside to the outside of the cover and I'm going to leave it sitting in there. So you can see it's just poking out through that hole. I'm going to leave that sitting there while I thread my needle. Now how much thread do you need? I'm going to use three lengths of the height of the journal. So one, two, three. Thread your needle. Once your needles thread, get another small clamp and put it at the tail end of your thread. And this is going to stop your thread from being accidentally pulled through the hole. Now it's time to start sewing. I'm going to pull out my pokey tool and because the hole is fresh, I'm going to be able to find my way through with the needle much easier. So I almost close my pages and out comes that needle. So far, so good. Pull it all the way through until that little clamp gets close to the hole. Now it doesn't matter whether you go to the top hole or the bottom hole here. Now already I've pretty well lost where that hole is. So I'm going to come back through to the inside and refind my hole. Now when I go to put my awl through the fabric here, can you see what I can see? Nothing. There's absolutely no way that I can find where that hole is. A few moments later. So I grab my template, I've marked it top, and I'm going to put darker dots on here so you can see. I'm going to put it back on my journal and I'm going to line the template back up with the journal. So I'm following the fold line of the journal here back up. So I line the pages back up where they should be. And then I know right here that I can put my needle in here. That is the only way I'm going to find where that hole needs to be. So now I can continue to push my pokey tool back out here. So now I can see where I've got to put the needle to come back in from the outside of the cover back to the inside. So I'm going to actually do it in steps. So I'll take the pokey tool out, come to the outside. I can see that it's a fresh hole. Put my needle through that hole, come to the inside of the cover. Now I've come through to the inside of the cover. You can see my long straight stitch on the outside. 
and you can easily see my hole in the paper so I can come back to the inside of the journal without any trouble. Now I'm on the inside of the center of the signature. I normally skip the center hole and go down to the bottom hole. So I'm going to sew through the middle hole here. Just going to move this thread out of the road and just put my needle from the center out through my signature only and pull the thread not too snug because I need a bit of leeway here to be able to come back out through my cover. I can see where the hole is because it's already got a stitch in it. And then come back out through the cover on the outside and pull that snug. Now I'm going to pull this stitch reasonably snug while it's got one stitch in it, one long stitch. So I'm just double checking it that it's a, a reasonably snug stitch, which it's all good to keep going. Now the bottom hole here stayed in place. I can see where this hole is. I'm pretty lucky that the hole stayed open for me. So I can come back through to the inside of the fabric don't worry about that loose stitch in the middle there. We'll fix that up. Then come back through to the inside of the pages. If you have trouble getting back through this hole, use your pokey tool again from the inside and line them up again. So to fix that loose hole up in the middle, just grab the tail and pull it snug. Not too tight. Now to finish it off, all we need to do is tie the tail and the needle end together. I'm taking my clamps off. I'm going to take my tail clamp off and I'm going to cut my needle thread because I don't need all of that thread. And I, you can just tie a knot here if you like, but I'm going to duck my thread under the existing stitch so that it doesn't pull on that hole. So if I put this stitch in my right hand under the stitch here, it's not going to be pulling on the hole in the center. It's going to have some thread to anchor on. And I'll tie a knot and just tie a second knot. And I'm happy to say the pages are sewn in. This is the best part. <laughs> But that's turned out pretty good. Now never really worry if your stitches don't turn out perfect because you can always grab a piece of lace and cover them up. So if your stitches aren't in line with your paper, nothing works better than a piece of fabric or lace. And I mean really you could always put a piece of lace on there whether you mess your stitches up or not. The pages are turning perfectly as they should. Now I'm just going to show you how I've embellished the cover. When I pull a book apart, I always try and keep anything I can to recycle. In this case, I've kept the head and the tail bands. I also pulled out the little ribbon that you, you know, the placeholders for your book pages. And it just so happens that this ribbon color suits the color of my fabric perfectly. So I've just glued this in place and I've hung it over one of the pages. I'll let it hang out the side as well because I think it just looks pretty there seeing a little bit of this ribbon here. What you can also do is use some of these bulb pins to hang anything you like. You don't have to have charms to hang off your journal. I've got a heap of these vintage threads that I picked up from the charity shop. So if I put a bulb pin on them, they make perfect page dangles or a dangle for my cover. And I got these little bulb pins from Amazon. I've put the link below for you if you want to check them out. 
I've got a few vintage doilies. It doesn't really matter if you've got an off-white doily to put on your covers. This one works okay because it's got a little bit of pink in it and looks great with a saru ribbon. But this is my absolute favourite. It's I've never seen anything like it. It's got these beautiful little bees on them. And this is the doily that I'm going to use for the cover for this journal. These old crocheted style, softer so style doilies, they look great too. So I've got tons of these, but today I'm going to break out and use this little doily on this cover. So I'm just using a bit of the fabric glue behind the stitching bits of the doily only. I do not want any of the glue to accidentally seep through any of this beautiful old doily. I don't think this cover needs too much in the way of embellishing. Simplicity is often the best. I'm going to wrap a little bit of sari silk ribbon for the tie. Tie a bow in it and that's it. I love this little journal. It feels so good in my hand. I will be offering it for sale coming up soon. So if you want to have a go at making a fabric journal, my tip to you is get the hang of sewing in the pages into a paper journal first before you try the fabric because it is a little bit trickier than sewing your paper pages into a paper cover. Have a look at this video here that shows you how to sew a single signature into a paper cover. Thanks for watching and ciao for now.